Dejan Arsi wearing this seven jersey for Parramatta tonight. He was good last week, and that win against the Bulldogs on the holiday Monday. We're underway. It's Manly and Parramatta. Seagulls will begin as they work it away from their own 10 here. Not a bad crowd in attendance, plenty of noise here, as you would expect with these two teams going at it. Sean Kepi bouncing off defenders, and we'll be stopped here just inside the 20. As Croker from Dummy Half goes across to Schuster. Ethan Bullymore in the starting side, a switch for Anthony Seabon with Sam Fainu coming off the bench. Here's Paseca. We'll bring it back to almost the 40. And they approach the point. They can get to a kick here without incident in the first set. And see what the Eels can do from their own end of the field. It will be Arthur on this right-hand side of the field who puts boot the ball first. Kick goes down to Mike Acevo. He loves scoring tries here. He scores tries everywhere. He leads the NRL once again in that race for the Ken Irvine medal. And Parramatta have worked it away through Simonson from inside their 20. Yeah, it's so important to have a good chase on Mike Acevo too. Put the ball up as high as you can. Make sure your chase is good. It's a good first up tackle on Sevo too from the Manly side. As they marched up over the halfway line with their first set, it was a good set from them. Working up towards the 40 metre line here where Ogden will play it. Brad hands are still there. Filling in for Josh Hodgson, who is out of action with that neck injury once again, that troublesome disc that he has. And the end of the back of the sets comes down for the kick. And Arcee lobs it down, Saab bringing it back. And Manly begin from inside their 20. As Arthur goes from dummy half, a little shift here for the Seagulls across to Christian Tui Pilotu. We get downstairs to Jake Duke. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, everyone at home. Perfect conditions here in Parramatta for these bitter rivals to square off one more time. And there is a spot on the top, in the top eight, on the line with these two teams sitting eighth in ninth position at the moment. And we know both of them can score points. The Seagulls, they put 58 past the Dolphins last week. And Parramatta, they have a differential of plus 74, which is actually the fourth best in the competition, despite where they sit on the ladder. So it should be a cracker tonight. And yeah, ninth place at the moment, the Eels. Seven wins, seven losses. Arthur just taking it out of play and doing a nice job in the early going here against his former club. Gee, that's an interesting play there from the Manly half back there. Just to kick into touch, just to try and slow things down. It'll be the play the ball in the middle of the park. You wouldn't think his players needed a bit of a rest there, but take the grubber kick for touch, give Parramatta the ball back on their 10 metre line. He's had a pretty good start too. No real pressure from the Parramatta chases there. He's got a couple of kicks early. Hasn't been under any pressure so far. And from their 20. The Eels just punching it forward. With Ryan Madison in the halves tonight. Davey playing it there. Hotwood now through the middle. He runs towards Paseca and also Sipley. Sipley makes the stop. 10 short of the halfway line. The right hand side they go. Madison playing on that right edge, pointing. Wants to come right back on his outside as Gutherson takes it forward. Off the back of a hat trick, a first half hat trick, no less, on Monday against the Bulldogs. As the kick goes in the air again from Dejan Arce, Saab puts it down as simply as you like. But a lot of pressure there. Sevo doesn't want to play at it for fear of being taken into touch. There'll be no advantage there, and they'll bring it back with a golden chance here to score first points. Gee, that's not bad. They'll kick to him as much as they can now. Saab so putting the first one down. That might rattle him a little bit. Arcee with the kicking duties here. Up the left-hand side. The second time they've kicked down to him. Perfect position now to Parramatta for Parramatta to start the game. Let's have a look and see whether he does come involved in this set here. Gutherson, I'm sure he will a couple of times. As you mentioned, scored a hat-trick in the first half last week. He's about to feed the scrum. They win it hands, comes across here to Madison. He's a massive body, isn't he, for a 5-8. Stopped there by Bullymore and Schuster. Ogden now, taking it towards the line. He's only a couple of 
leaders out. Their sprint for a shift on the left-hand side. Goes from Madison to Campbell Gillard, who just works it forward. Good defence so far in this set on their own line for the Sea Eagles. Five gone. No score here at Combank. Hands goes wide on and into half a space. They did well in the end. Good work by Bullymore. Stops him a metre out. Hands from Madison. Rubbers for himself. It's going to be too big. You fancy that won't be his strong suit tonight. No, I was thinking before the game, think run for Madison. Don't try and mix your game up too much. He's a great power runner. Tried something a little bit different there. Too much on that kick, the grubber kick. Up the right-hand side, dead in goal. And on the back of that, the restart. And then we saw it get a penalty, just a little bit too slow to roll off in the tackle. Cartwright gives away the penalty. Okay, Josh, not far from here, Carl. Stand on it, Schuster and the Seagull will find the line here. Schuster will, in fact, do the kicking. And it's four years since Ryan Madison played in the 5 8 role. Back in 2019, he did it last when he was at the West Tigers. Seagulls from the fourth. Take it forward through Kepi. Stepped inside one defender. Manly have a chance here after the Eels have their turn inside the red zone at the other end. Schuster out to Paseca here, taking some stopping. Davey and Hopgood. Six again is the call. Bonus set here for the Seagulls. Croker comes back with a short time. The pass looked forward. Parramatta fans certainly thought it was forward, but no call from the officials. Play here through Ola Kuwati. Arthur from dummy half. Goes through Croker, now Sipley. Runs into Wogden and Campbell Gillard. Still going, backing his way almost to the goal line. And then the beep going. Oh, now he's, he's picked up a knee injury there, Sipley, and falls back to the ground. And then Kepi trying for the crash play. Puts it down and gives it straight back to Parramatta. Sipley's on his feet, but moving uneasily. Well, I'll tell you what it was with Sipley. He was standing in the tackle, as you mentioned. He was backing in, and then all of a sudden, Gutherson come third man in and dived at his leg. So, Sipley might have been calling for a penalty there. And there's the lost ball. Gutherson comes away with it. It was like a truck backing up to the loading dock. Off Sipley, and in the end, picked up a knee injury. As well, Parramatta here get a penalty. Manly up inside the 10, and the Eels to come right back at them. Important game for both clubs. Perched on the edge of the top eight, as they are the Seagulls in eighth position. Eels just outside in ninth. First of 10 games to run towards the finals for Parramatta. They probably need at least five more wins, maybe six to qualify. The big game's in September. Campbell Gillard on the front foot here. Trying to play for Brendan Hands, who comes across to Hopgood. Back on the inside, gets an offload away. That was clever. Campbell Gillard back on his feet quickly. Staying alive in the play. And he's just inside the ten as Hands looks across towards Hopgood. Comes short side to RC. Good try last week. Stopped here, though, and a tackle by Arthur. Hands rubbering. Hopgood was pushing through, getting back and winning the race. It was Croker who took the ball dead. Coming up to tackle Chris five. Butler wants to take a look. Having no try. Try to confirm that this well, I think no Hopgood might have thought he was knocked Hopgood off the ball there. Look for a possible we'll see if the, and that's what the, the referee chase. is saying as to the contact on the Parramatta lock forward as he pushed through here on the kick. From hands. Right side kick chase are cleared as onside. Kano Weeks there in the front line. Well, he did his best to shadow it, didn't he? Didn't really move dramatically, though, to take away the running for Hopgood. We clearly have no grounding, and the ball comes off Lock and Croker. We're just going to check the contact on the way through. I don't think he could. I don't think he could get out of the way any better than he did. He plants his feet there. Does he throw out his left arm? Maybe. If he throws out the left arm, you can't do that. I'll get the ball back anyway. This angle here, the close-up might give us a better idea. K.O. Weeks has lean eyes for Jermaine Hopgood. Towards Hopgood and takes him to the ground. Causing interference. Mm. 
In, in our opinion, it's a professional foul. We're ruling out the possibility of a penalty try due to the proximity of Lachlan Croker. We have a decision. So Croker would have won the race anyway, they're saying. It will be no try. Bad. But Kyle Weeks is about to go to the sin bin for 10 minutes. Which will allow Parramatta. I don't think they'll shoot for goal. If they're a man down, they'll Ladies go for man, the try mate, here. Professional foul in a try scoring situation in the bin. It's 13 on 12. Parramatta with a one man advantage. Weeks a professional foul on his own line, taking down Hopgood. He, he did his best to cover it up, didn't he? It wasn't that much in it, but he threw out that left arm. The mark's going to be 15 in. You see it again there. Good angle to show you just the way that he was leaning on the way through to deny. Yeah, clean passage that. there for Hopgood to pour through and put some pressure on Croker. Wait, wait. Taking a long time for the Eels chase. to work out I what they're doing the here. Paramount have to remain on their line. Pa yeah. The uh, sorry, Eel Sea Eagles. The Eels can take it back as far as they want. There's a real mix-up there for Croker who thought the Sea Eagles could advance. So hands waiting here at dummy half. So they play the ball. Oh, we're back underway. Set restart for Parramatta. It's Campbell Gillard who's driven backwards in a strong tackle. He'll play it five metres out. Arcee waits at first receiver. Goes across to Madison. Gutherson bounces away from the tackle there of Kohler. Not enough though to stop him. About ten away from the manly line. Eels with a one-man advantage from Hopgood to Walton with a shuffle on. Olakua to he was beaten. Ogden got to the line, and the referee thinks he planted it down okay. She's a much improved player, isn't he, Ogden? Gets his opportunity now. With Palo away for state of origin duty. He's already had a good offload in this game to start. This time he just powers his way through. Often he can't make the tackle Olakawatu. Just sort of goes sideways here. Look at what I really should have put him on the ground there. Just tried for the one-on-one -on -one steal. It'll be interesting to have a look. I reckon they'll have a look at the, the put down. This one will tell the story, but that close to the line, you've got to try and make a ball and all tackle, not go for a steal. Just slips out of it. Kepi can't do it. No, that's a try. Good put down. It's had a great start to the game. That last angle, definitely no doubt about the put down here from Arthur Hickey Ogden. With a one-man advantage, yeah, it was an inopportune time. Moli Olakawatu to try and come up with a one-on-one -on -one steal on his own line to miss it and miss the tackle to boot. And then Ogden put the pressure on those behind him. Yeah, especially when you're a man down. I, I don't think that was the play there from Olakawatu. Try and do the one-on-one -on -one steal and on a big man. Once he got past him, poor old Kepi tried to close the gap, but... Ogden too strong to score the first try. Didn't take him long. Man down, Manly. Here is Gutherson. Adds the extra two. There's the Eels who lead six points to nil. Twelve gone here at Combank. Downstairs to you, Jake. The Eels take advantage of having a man up. This clever little click here from Brendan Hands, who's filling in for Josh Hodgson, still out indefinitely with injury. And that sends KO Weeks to the bin. It was good effort from Jermaine Hopgood to chase that one as well. And then he's involved in the play there. He tips it on for Offahiki Ogden, who's made the most of his, his game time so far this season. Only played five games this year, usually averaging about 34 minutes off the bench. But he punches out 122 metres, about 16 tackles, and has really filled the void with a number of guys out, as Blocker said at times during the year. RCG missing games. Junior out tonight, and Widow McGregor also missing. So a good try for Offahiki off Ogden. Off well, missing some uh, forward firepower, that's for sure, the Parramatta Eels. But here he is again. Off the back of the try, Ogden... Strong carry there off the restart to take them back outside the 20. It's Cartwright works it forward. Having an option to spend some time in the halves tonight. Could work out that way depending on how Madison fares. Strong tackle on Campbell Gillard. Underneath was Sean Kepi. Stopped in goal. Arcy into his left hand side. Simonson losing his footing, wrapped up there by Arthur. And also Saab. The Parramatta back on the attack. There's the contact again, just driving in up under the ball. Kepi, terrific stuff. 
Dejan Arce puts it in the air. Tupolotu underneath it, didn't get to it cleanly, might it be play on here, still there for the Not Eels, it should they want it, it is going to be a knock on against Manly. Gee, they've been ordinary under the high ball start, to start this game, that's a second error on the other side this time. I like their chance, it's just competing for the football, there's the knock on there. Make sure you stay on this Another opportunity now, man down, middle of the park. They'll come up with something special here, Parramatta. Still six and a half minutes, all thereabouts. So it's 13 on 13 once again when Weeks returns from the sin bin. Great chance here for Parramatta. Scrum, Arcee does well there. So it was terrific from hands at the back of the scrum. Arcee just about works his way through the line, stopped eventually just by Sipley and also Kepi as Ogden. In the charge for a double here early on. And hands, it comes back. Here's Madison doing the ball playing. Quickly across to this left-hand side as they try and tip it on. Gutherson had the ball knocked down by the Sea Eagle, so we'll come back to them once again for six more plays here inside the red zone. Gee, they hung on there, Manly. We've seen a number of times that Gutherson's got this great ability to tip the ball on in the one motion. Gets caught that time. Saad makes the decision to come in to make the tackle. And the knock on Manly, hang on. The Seagulls missing. Thank you. can pack into the scrum with five in the scrum. They're three on three on either side of the field. The Eels go back to the middle again. The pass isn't great. Penasini wrapped up there pretty quickly by Tolu Cole. Now Russell skipping out of dummy half. Takes it to Bullymore and also Schuster. Chance to make it ten points to nil here. Ogden runs towards the post. Kuwatu was in pretty tight there. Zask comes to Gutherson. Here's a chance for Simonson. He's got Sebo there. He doesn't need him. Parramatta have a second one in double quick time. Manly, down a man defensively, are reeling at the moment. And it's 10 points to nil to the Eels. Yeah, just couldn't handle the pressure there. The Manly side, you can put it down on the mistake on the other side of the field. The knock on. They've got a repeat set. Simonson, it is who scores. Just strides out of the tackle here. Just got him done for numbers. Gutherson again, the extra man. A one on one tackle they can't make. It was Arthurs who missed that tackle there. Simonson was able just to skip out of the tackle. And Parramatta, with all the football and all the pressure, go back to back. He's just hedging his bets there. He had a little eye on the decoy, run it back on the inside, and then gave Simonson that avenue on his outside shoulder. Slaps the ground in the background. There was a collision back midfield there. Andrew Davy running into one of the Eagles defenders. Caused a bit of a, a moment there after the try had been awarded. But Parramatta, what an opening for them. 10 points to nil. 16 minutes gone now. And Still, time here against 12 to add more points. Yeah, and what about the start here from Parramatta? They're 11 from 11, 100%. They've scored back-to-back -back tries. Manly only four for se from seven. You can put it down to the kick reception on both sides of the field. They've made two errors, two knock-ons. Parramatta are good enough to make them pay. 10-0. From out wide, Gutherson. Make it 12. A terrific strike. Flags up. He's all smiles as he flips the kicking tee to the ball boy. It's 12 points to nil. Parramatta leading the Seagulls. With, with no Mitch Moses, no Dylan Brown, Brad Arthur called on his skipper, Clint Gutherson, to stand up. He throws a peach of a pass there to Bailey Simonson, who has been one of the Eels' most informed players so far this season. That's five tries in his past five games. Had a monster performance against the Dogs last week, running almost 200 metres, busting eight tackles. That will please his coach, Parramatta's Brad Arthur. Yes, mixed emotions beyond full time for Brad Arthur at the moment, though. He's trying to expose his son in the seven jersey. 
Not able to do that on that occasion. Doesn't help, of course, the Manly have one player missing in the line as they work it away to Eels. And inside their own 20 here, Davey stopped pretty quickly by Sipley as they come back through Hopgood and then Gutherson, Cartwright. He had Schuster going backwards in a hurry. It's a powerful set from the Parramatta Eels to begin with here. Hopgood and the champions from the early 80s watching on tonight. What a lineup it was as well on the ground before kickoff. They clap them onto the field. Reason the clap here so far. Hands. Madison down the short side. Penasini is there. Kohler gets to him. They hold him up and they'll march him into touch. Boy, the Seagulls needed that stop. Yeah, on the last two, they get caught going up the short side. Trying to play. Kohler it is with a good tackle assisted there. Billy Moore comes in. Forced in the touch. Manly get the football back. They needed to defend that set and they did. Over there, 20 now. Oh. And find a way to give up some time on the clock. Getting close to a point. Well, I'll be back to 13 on 13 when Weeks returns in about a minute's time or just over as a second. Tall front rower striding out there. Stopped by Cartwright, though, and Madison. Simply back through the middle, but runs into Campbell Gillard, who made his return from a groin injury last week and that big win against the Bulldogs on a Kawatu here not that by Dejan Arce there is K.O. Wicks far away from being back on deck Kepi Running sideways here is Schuster has the ability to create something out of nothing can't do anything there it is again the full complement for the Seagulls Croker for Bullymore they've made heavy weather of this out of six too many carries really bent the line there of the Eels as Arthur puts it up. Put some pressure here on Sivo coming forward. Ruben Garrick got there. Sivo makes the mistake. It's six more tackles here for Manly. An awkward looking attempt there from Micah Sivo who reels back, throws his head back there in disgust. Here's Croker. Comes back to Sipley. Despite being dominated for the. The period of the sin bin. Manly can hit straight back here and close this gap. Schuster on the edge. Bully Moore just about pushes through. Taken down by Ryan Madison from Schuster. Comes back to Croker. Here's Kepi. He runs into Madison again. And they're still five metres out. Last play here on this set as it comes across to Sipley. Now's the last, in fact. As Croker, they get six more plays. Croker from dummy half. The pressure continues on Parramatta. And done well to defend up until that point. Now a crack from dummy half for Manly, but there's nothing doing there. Just a waste of play, isn't it? Just trying to dive over. Just wait. Tackle two out here. 100 to 1 to get a try there. Simply it was. And Parramatta defence all over him. Only had four or five tackles inside the 20 now, the Manly side. Try time, well, play one. there. They've still got four up their sleeve, though. There's a stoppage. Three, 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 three. Eels line. Just not getting the outstanding eight count Two, for. Five, I'll give him a bit of benefit down there. Arce, and also a bit of attention. Not sure he's being treated for a cut. On two. Which was the case. Claret flowing there from a, a nick five, around five. about the eyebrow. We're two. back on now. Time on. As Paseca charges, Hardy still going. Drives them all the way in to the in goal area. The ball is stolen. Gutherson comes away with it. He comes up with some big plays, doesn't he? Gutherson always in and around the ball. Paseca, what a run it was. He's going to run over the dead ball line. There's the steal there. And the fact that he made it all the way into the in goal area means. You can have as many in the tackle as you like and rip the ball away, which is what Gutherson did. Dangerous situation there for Parramatta. Works out great with Gutherson on the spot again to come up with the football. Hands from dummy half here. He runs a long way there before he gets the kick in on the front foot as he does. And he goes down to Kaio Weeks. He'll bring it back. He's got Tumapalotu back there with him. Brings it back to almost the 30. 
midway through this opening half. Warren Smith, Steve Locker Roach, Jake Duke. In the Combank Stadium, second of three games tonight. The Tigers and the Storm beyond this one to round out a big Super Saturday on Fox League as Kawatu takes a carry, plays it just inside the 40. From Arthur. There's the Jason Saab. A battle for metres at this point of the field in a couple of sets now, Manly. Much of a roll on here again. Now some width. Bullymore back through the middle. That's handy. Defends away from hand. Still going Bullymore. He finds Schuster. Wrapped up very quickly there by Cartwright. But there was a player taken out of it. Trying to support the play. And it will be a penalty for Manly. They're starting to get a little bit of the ball now. This will put him in All great field Reagan. position. So I see Olokawatu on this right hand side. Get some early ball. You know what a powerful runner he is. He doesn't get himself involved in the game as much as he can. There's a tackle there. And Regan Campbell Gillard was the man that was penalised. Just a little bit late. Just a little kick for touch. Manly on the attack again. Been over the line once already. Let's see if they can come up with points here. Half combination. Jake Arthur on the right-hand side. Josh Schuster out there on the left edge. See if they mix things up here. Schuster at first receiver. Paseca takes it inside the 20. They set themselves fairly flat on both sides of the field. Schuster is there. Arthur wrapping to the left-hand side. Great hands. Terrific work by Weeks. And then Kohler on to Tua Pilotu. That was beautiful from Manley. Yeah, Tua Pilotto gets uh, the spoils there in the end. That was beautiful play there. Explosive speed there from Wicks to come in to make the extra man. And that is a great try. Good hit back there from Manly. Great hands. Watch this, the money ball, the catch and pass. A bit of a practice run here. This is the money ball from Wicks. That's a beautiful pass on the outside. And Manly hit back, improves his position there. And they've shown that they can score points, Manly, when they hang on to the football. And that's a good hit back from them. Been all Parramatta early in this game. And Manly have found a way to hit back. A nice confident move from Jake Arthur to swing to the left-hand side, give them the extra man there. You saw Sean Russell trying to jam in and shut things down before it got to the man on screen, Christian Tuipilotu. It puts Manly on the board here tonight at 12 points to fall, 15 out from half-time, and they've weathered the storm pretty well. Conceded two tries while they were down to 12 with Weeks and the sin bin for the professional foul. Proved to be a rather expensive one, but they've got themselves into the contest now. And look sharp on that particular play. Well, both sides have shown that they can score when they when they mount pressure. A fair bit of football the last 10 minutes of Manly side. They're good enough to score. Ruben Garrick, at the back of last week, equaling the club record for most points in a game with his 30 against the Dolphins. And Dave Brown and Andrew Johns, along with Garrick, done that twice in their careers. He misses here to the right-hand side, didn't miss much last week in that big 40-point win against the Dolphins. They're back within eight here of the... Eel, Schuster to the line, Arthur likewise, and then Weeks, great catch and pass. And all Tolu Kola had to do was shift it on for Tua Pilotu to go in untouched. Nice work by the Seagulls on that left-hand side. They provide some variety. Halves combining there, both Schuster and Arthur. Must have been a strange situation for Jake Arthur to arrive here today. He's played 21 games with the Eels to come back and play against them. He made the mid-season switch to Manly for the blessing of his family, his father, of course, in particular. He was a lightning rod for opinion pretty much any time he took the field. And his father in charge here from the Eels fans. Getting comfortable over there on the northern beaches and playing some good footy so far here tonight. Moye is out there, off the bench for the Seagulls. Bullymore here to play it just outside the 30. Minimal gain once again. Meters on these yardage sets. 
Been hard yards, very hard yards, minimal yards in their own end a number of times now. As a result, Arthur kicking here just outside the 30. It'll go down to Gutherson. Sevo is there. Skips his way back towards the middle of the field, wrapped up by Lachlan Croker. That's a good stop from the big, powerful winger. Yeah, this is a big set here now for the Manly side. They've been able to cruise through their middle. They've got a number of offloads here. Parramatta side, that's Kepi again. His defence has been solid for Manly, but he needs a few mates with him now. Makatoa works it down to just inside the 40. Manly's end of the field, back end of the set. Through Hopgood, it comes to Vasi, then Gutherson, Simonson back on the inside, goes across the face of the Manly defensive line, runs eventually to Sean Kepi, who with the help of Schuster takes him down, he pinches a couple of extra metres as well. And this is the last. Arcee kicks towards the corner. Sivo against Saab. Saab up above everybody, puts it down. And Parramatta have six more tackles coming up. Yeah, look, they've got to correct there. I think the ball's gone forward off Saab into a Parramatta player. Or into Sivo it is. It'll be a Parramatta ball. Garrick planted himself in front to make it difficult for Sivo. It was a legal block, if you like. He was able to still get past him, Sivo, and put some pressure on Saab to force the mistake. Terrific venue, this one. New pool opened up, not that far away, Parramatta. But their aquatic centre back after the old one was replaced by this stadium. Here's the Eels on the attack. Penasini back on the inside. Boy, he's a strong setup. Just have got a hold of him around the legs and a good thing as well. Madison, first receiver here. Comes back to Makatoa. Trying to get that arm free. Simply made sure that he couldn't pop it out the back. And now Madison at the line. Hot good going with him. Terrific tackle by Ola Kawatu. Saves a try for Manley. Quickly back to the right-hand side. Gutherson, Cartwright, stopped there in the tackle. Colbert was jamming in. They show a dummy from dummy half, and Clint Gutherson, off the back of a hat-trick against the Bulldogs, grabs another try here tonight. Gee, after they had a, a couple of great tackles there, the Manly side on their own goal line. First it was Ola Kawatu, then they were stopped on the line. The dummy from Gutherson. Here's a near try. What about this for a tackle? Unbelievable. It looked like he was in for all money. Hopgood. Olakawatu with the tackle. Gutherson. Dummies one way. Goes underneath the markers. Always in the game. Scores after a couple of good defensive plays there from Manly. They couldn't hang on. And Gutherson in again. Always something happening when he's got the ball. Gives him a little bit of a gobful too about their marker play. Never short of a word. And the fullback who was great on the King's Holiday Monday, just five days ago against the Bulldogs at Accor Stadium. And he sensed the chance was there for a real dummy from dummy half and makes it 16 points to four. And that mistake by Saab off the bomb proves to be a rather expensive one for the Seagulls. They've been a little bit ordinary under the high ball, haven't they, on their own goal line, the Manly side. Three errors. As a matter of fact, couple from Saab. And they're good enough to score, make them pay. They haven't really had to build that much pressure against Manly. Kick is a good one once again from Clint Gutherson. It's 18 points to four, Jake. Yeah, the Eels have bombed well into that left corner and exploited Jason Saab. They got in the attack there, came close to uh, Hopgood here. Great ball from hands out the back and Madison they're playing in 5-8 gets him very close but a great try saver by Ola Kawatu. and then you've got skipper Clint Gutherson he loves playing against his former team Manly the team he debuted for that's his fourth try in the past three games playing against him including a double he got in round three earlier this year he has a 60 percent win rate against the Sea Eagles as well and he's stepping up here tonight as ever the number one jersey Gillard bringing it back. Gutherson, of course, was one of the options to move into the halves, but such a vital part of their 
their play, and especially defensively in the fullback role, with a big, big risk to take him out of that number one jersey tonight to push him into the halves. Madison has done a, a serviceable job so far, and they've done what they had to do get through their sets, make Manly work it away from the other end of the field, and then see what they can produce once they get inside the 20. They certainly have been helped out by that Sinbin period when Weeks was missing. The hands comes across to Madison. Simple carry here. Good metres though after contact, and he's just outside the 30 and a set restart. And more pressure coming up here on the Seagulls. Well, there was until that moment. Penasini giving Cartwright a bit of a gobful there for a pass that wasn't so good. Yeah, I think the idea was right. Just raiding the short side of the Manly side, just struggling to get back to 10 metres and up again. They go up that short side. Cartwright, we know what a good ball player he is. That ball. Just a little bit behind Penasini there. It was a hard one to take. The idea was right again from the Parramatta side. Manly hang on just. Just their third mistake of this opening half for the home side. 61% of the ball. A very good completion rate. And have Manly in trouble here. Eight and a half from half time. Well, of Kowatu takes a carry there. Hopgood bump on the arm and flexing as he works his way back into the defensive line. Aaron Woods is out there. His left hand side, they take it through Josh Alloyer. Five short of the halfway line. He'll play it there as Schuster kicks early. Kohler, the speedster, trying to put Gutherson under pressure here. Got an awkward bounce, but he did well to come up with the ball and wraps it up taking it to ground with Kohler hot on his hammer trying to put him under the pup we really got to bridge up now this manly side with some line speed try and force the error they've cruised up through their ruck so far a couple of good defenders there for the manly side Kepi's been outstanding but the rest of them have been a bit a bit shy in defense so far Dejan Arcee here, showing on the left-hand side. Mike Acevo had snuck in field, looking for a run. And Joe offer him Gowie. Mid-season switch in this game from the Tigers to the Eels. Coming back from the calf. Injury, a kick here, which will go out on the full. Pressure there from Lachlan Croker forces the mistake from Dejan Arcee. And Manly in great field position to begin this set. Yeah, it's the first time they've really put the pressure on. It was Lachlan Croker, the captain of Manly here this evening. Just come out and really put the pressure on off the side of the boot. It's a good get for Manly up over the halfway line now to start their set. And there's some solid defence there from Parramatta. Well, there are early plays in some of these sets, and Bullymore's lost this. Missed by the sideline official in the far side of the field and the on-field referee. Came away from him. Cartwright might have got a knock there in an awkward spot as Woods takes it down towards the 30. But again, not much happening from the Manly forwards in these hit-ups to begin the set. Arthur back on the inside. Alloyer. Half a gap there. It closed pretty quickly, but they're back at the 20. Two plays in this set. Arthur. Pass goes to ground beyond Schuster. Kohler cleans it up. Can't provide much. And got one more here. And it's Schuster. They put the kick in. Coming through. Olakowatu's an aerial specialist. Gutherson takes it and keeps it in the field of play. He did well. He knew exactly what he was doing there, Gutherson. Knew where he was. Catches the ball in the full. Olakowatu just pouncing down at speed. And that's a safe play there. And they get the penalty too to boot. Manly trying to bridge up and get off their line to put some pressure on. What a half he's had, Gutherson, he's everywhere. Knew exactly where he was with that tackle from Olakowatu. Stays in the field of play. Yeah, there was some poise there, wasn't there, to take the catch, see where Olakowatu was and realise all he had to do was just spin in the motion of the tackle and he was going to be OK. So full set here as Hands waits for the Davy play the ball. Joe O beyond the halfway line. Good carry from Offerhen Gowie. 
Yeah, but nice touches early on after coming off the bench. Back through the middle they go through Makatoa. Quick play the ball here. Hands has Hopgood at the advantage line. Arcee bypasses Davy. Simonson again. Sebo runs towards Saab. Put a good bump on him. And then got some help from Arthur on the inside. But they're only 10 metres out from Arcee. It goes across to Hands. Here's Hopgood. Takes him on. Fends away from Aloye. Still going. Gets there as well. What a run. Hopgood scores a strong carry by the Eels lock forward. They just had so much momentum in that set of six. And they cut back to the middle and the fend on Aloye was a classic. Yeah, it was all on the back of a Sevo run here. Powerful stuff from Sevo. Saab comes up with the tackle. But Hopgood, he was a little bit... Un unlucky a little bit earlier. It was nearly over the line. It was Olakawatu that made a great tackle on him about 10-15 minutes ago. We're all excited about the ability of Hopgood to be able to offload the football. This time he backed himself. Up there with the best offloaders in the game. The show and go. You can't make the tackle on him. Hopgood scores just on the stroke of half time. And Parramatta, deserved leaders. They've been good in the first half here. Manly have been sloppy, stop start. Haven't really dominated in anywhere in the game so far. And when you have a look at the scoreboard, 22 to 4. It's been all the Eels. That it has. They put on some big score lines in recent times. They won 36 16 against the Rabbitohs back in round 12. Last week, just five days ago, in fact, 34 to 12 against the Bulldogs up the road at Accor Stadium. Here we are, not far out from half time, three remaining, and it's 22 to 4 with a kick to come here from Gutherson. He's got the radar locked on tonight. Midway between the posts and the sideline, fades it back again. He could be playing in the US Open in round three early tomorrow morning on Channel 503 on Fox Sports. He's hitting them that well. Gee, it's been some sort of a game here from the Parramatta side, considering only a five-day turnaround. Hopgood backs himself that time to score. Parramatta doing it quite comfortably in the first half here. And watch the kick again. Looked like it was going to miss the left-hand side, but he banks one off the cush, and it goes in for two more points. And they're lapping this up, the Eels fans, looking for their seventh win. This 10-game period, this game, of course, begins a 10-game run all the way to the finals. They've already had them one by just before they took on the Bulldogs. A bye coming up in a couple more weeks, and then they have their third and final bye in round 27. That'll be timely. Should they have qualified for the finals by that stage. To have the bye in the final regular season round, that'll be a real boost for the Eels to get fresh and ready should they be in the top eight. Cartwright on this right-hand side. Fix a ball to Penasini. Russell now comes away from the sideline. Skips away from the tackle there of Tupolotu, who stays alive and takes him to ground. But here they are. Four plays gone already. Back on the attack. Madison again. Just keeps charging forward. Taking metres after contact. Arsene with the kick. And he tests out Saab again. Why wouldn't you? Saab flying. Comes up with the ball on this occasion. Just had to catch that one. He grabs it and nurses it to the ground. Well, he didn't hesitate that time. He attacked the football, Saab. Good to see him get one. And they've been pretty ordinary, those crossfield kicks. There's a penalty inside the 10 again. The Parramatta side just trying to jump the gun a little bit too early. And for now, with the kick for touch, trying to get onto the game here. A minute and a half before half time. Good kick for line, picks up plenty of metres. They'll begin here. Going to take us pretty much all the way to the half-time siren. Might be time for a bit of Josh Schuster magic. He's waiting out there on the left-hand side. This is most of the Manly team. Arthur gives it off to Bullymore, who works it forward. Stopped by Madison and also Cartwright. They've been so solid defensively on that right edge. Schuster! He wanted something there. He was at the advantage line and going at the... Eels to try and make them force a decision. 
And perhaps he passed it, chipped it, whatever he's going to do before he actually had possession of it. Well, I reckon you're right there, Warren. They've attacked him here tonight. They haven't allowed Schuster to ball play before the line. And they've gone after him in the first half here. He's got to compose himself at half time and try and get himself back into the game in the second half. We know what ability he's got, but they've really pressured him here in the first half. And the missed tackle starting them out now. The Manly side with 13, only five from Parramatta. The task on the other side of the break will be get more possession. They've had 40% of it only. Manly to this point of the game. As Simonson plays it, here is Offer and Galley who. Pops the ball out the back, staying alive on the play. That was nice work by Ruben Garrick. Time maybe for just the one more play here. Let's see what the option is. Bullymore wants a quick carry and a very quick play the ball. Parramatta trying to wrap him up to take him to ground. Couldn't do so entirely. Woods now out the back. Another ball goes to ground. Olakawatu kicked it and then was grabbed by Andrew Davey. The referee will say... That was okay. Could have easily been a penalty to the Seagulls. But he blows half time and at the break, it's the Eels with a big lead here. They're in front by 20. After 40, Parramatta 24, Manly 4. Manly versus Parramatta. The battle this is to arch rivals at the moment. The Eels well on top. The Seagulls have points in them if they can get things going job here and get more possession than they did in the first half. Warren Smith along with Steve Blocker Roach and Jake Duke take you through this second 40 minutes. Parramatta looking for their eighth win of the season. Manly seventh and they're both perched on the edge of the top eight. Well six errors for Manly in the first half is where they've made them. It's in their own half and their own 20 metre line. That's been the biggest problem. Is there any chance in this game they've got to fix it the back end of the field for themselves up if they can't do that they'll march on Parramatta up over the halfway line already the Eels here on the last play of this opening set of the second half RC going down the kick with a smoke haze and pyrotechnics during half time as Kaio Weeks works it forward here spent 10 minutes in the sin bin if you missed the first half Parramatta scored two tries while he was missing to take a 12 points to nil lead. To a Pilotu. Try to score for the Manly side. Playing it there is now take a carry through the middle of the field. What's happening though for Tolu Kola? To a Pilotu again. Second carry in this set. And Arthur. From inside the 40, trying to get it over the head there of Sean Russell. His old teammate could manage that, and he'll bring it forward, Russell. Lockman Croker was there, diving at the legs, trying to make a tackle, and Russell goes to ground just outside the Parramatta 30. He picked that up pretty quickly, too, the kick down field. I think he was going for a 40-20 there, Arthur. You saw the winger there, Russell, clean it up there at the back. It's a good win for him, only the second tackle, nearly up over the halfway line already. And a little mistake here. Manly need more of this from the Eels in the second half after Parramatta had 60% of the ball in this match to this point. You could just see the old Grippo there. The old Grippo. Too much spray as he ran back out onto the field. Used to be the rosin bag. Now it's the spray. And you saw the ball there getting stuck quite obviously to the palm of his hand. Not, not the first time we've seen it block it, not no, been and the it last won't be time. The last, yes, of course. Okay, you're damned it's if you do and you're damned if you don't. Stay on! Let's see if the Seagulls convert something here. Charge going in this second half, trailing by 20. As Croker waits at dummy half. Garrick, the afternoons of his footballing life last week, in that big win against the Dolphins. 58 points Manly score. Different story here tonight. They are, of course, missing both Daly Cherry Evans and Tom Trevojevic. Bully Moore will play it. Slow play the ball. Parramatta have done a great job. He's controlling the ruck speed here this evening. Garrett, good hand. 
sends the pass, though, was just behind Saab. Sivo picks it up. Now there's a problem. Charging away, grabbed there by the speed of K.O. Weeks. Yeah, Weeks did, did well to turn around and chase there. Sivo, here's the Paramount side on the charge right now. Brendan Hands looked to his right-hand side, so Madison just takes it forward. And he'll play it, or almost lost it, hangs on to it just. Madison, and a dummy, falling for it. And the Eels defenders on this left-hand side of the field. Fayinu is out here, big rangy edge forward. Makatoa now stepping back into the meat of the manly defensive line. Look promising for the Seagulls. Here are the Eels, though, deep on the attack. Madison comes to Dejan Arce, back on the inside, Davey. There was a collision there with one of the Manly players, Offer him Gowie, hitting a Manly defender. Play on was the call. Hopgood scored that great solo effort try just before half time. Driven backwards here, though. Slow play the ball. The Eels with one more. Madison for Gutherson. There's a try of his own in the first half. They'll wrap him up and take him to ground. And that will be the changeover. Yeah, they got the Manly side right where they want them. Just him into the corner. The go forward has been pretty ordinary. They haven't won the right to go wide, Manly. They may have been dominated around the middle of that ruck. And look promising there on that right-hand side. You saw Saab there just reaching back on the replay. Pass behind him. Timing being better, who knows how it may have turned out. As Aaron Woods works it forward, we'll go downstairs to Jake Duke. Yes, Eagles coach Anthony Seabolt really disappointed with his side's first half as they try an early kick and just find touch, he said. But he did remind them that they had 39% of possession, 36% of territory. So if they can turn that around, just get one early try, they are back into this game. While Eels coach Brad Arthur, he said something very similar to what Jermaine Hopgood said to me coming off. Don't need to do change much in this second half. Just defend well. Don't give them any piggybacks out of their half, and we'll be able to finish this one off. They're in good shape here at the moment. Five gone in the second half, almost six minutes, in fact, and they still lead by 20 as Cartwright hit the deck there. And for him, Gowie runs towards Aaron Woods and Josh Allier. Back at the halfway line. Hopgood here. There was a ball playing through the middle. Makatoa spins an offload that probably didn't need to be thrown right there. And no looker as it was. And there was no advantage for Jason Saab or the Sea Eagles. It'll be a knock on against Parramatta. She's just trying to squeeze that ball out there. Makatoa. She might have been tackled before he had the opportunity, Arcee, to, to grab that ball there. They're going to challenge it. I reckon they might win this. He's tackled without the ball. Boy, it seemed to be a long Adam, time in coming the challenge. The on-field decision is a knock on Parramatta first. They believe there was a tackle without the ball first. I think they'll win this one. Aaron, there's a process. And the ball was Once just the decision, shoveled yeah, out the back the there by Makatoa. The okay? well, I think you'll find it's Ruben Gary that, make, Garrick, that makes the tackle. Look at that. Grabs him before the ball comes. Yep, that'll be Parramatta's Ruben ball. Ruben Garrick tackles Dejan Arce prior to him receiving the ball. And he stops him from being able to catch it. The only question I have about that was the pass actually backwards for Makatoa. It looked, watching the play live, that the pass might have been forward from Makatoa. It was certainly line ball. Watch it here again as he spins in the tackle. That passes forward, which makes what happens there a moot point. It should have been manly possession. Yeah, we've got the rub of the green here this afternoon. Parramatta side. Uh, Simonson here will play it just outside the Seagulls 20. A real bonus set here for Parramatta. Hands from dummy half. Service has been good again tonight with Josh Hodgson still watching on from the sideline. Second game he's missed with that neck problem. Makatoa plays it. Hot good here showing a dummy. Almost getting through the line there. It's stopped by Bullymore in the end. From the uprights for Arcee, it goes to Gutherson. Simonson, Sebo for the corner. Jason Saab hitting with everything. Well, he certainly did. I thought the pass might have been a little bit too early to him. He's hurt himself tackling Sebo. This pass here might have been a little bit too early from Simonson. Look at that for a hit. 
Out comes the shoulder. Push up, He scored plenty of tries, hasn't he, from close range like that? A catch. And just a steamroll over the in front of an opposing winger, Jason Saab felt the full force of it, and he's still down on the ground here. No, he's gone. And an AC joint problem, and certainly stretching out that right shoulder and or arm after the contact with Mike Asiva, who, just to remind you, if you don't know, is 111 kilograms, built out of granite and playing on the wing. <laughs> Doesn't seem right. A massive human. He didn't even feel it. No, he didn't. Here's Woods. Arthur. Uh, Ola Kowatu. Got a finger away from Dejan Arsing. Andrew Davy there around the legs. Ola Kowatu looking for a penalty. Doesn't get one. Ruben Garrick with a the carry. They're just outside the 40. Last play here. Arthur puts in the kick. Gutherson, though, is poised to make the catch. Just out from his own line. We'll bring it back here. Oh, runs into a strong tackle from Ola Kowatu. He's pulled off some beauties so far this season. There's a pretty solid shot there. Siva playing it there. Let's we'll take a look at the contact again. Croker and Olakawatu, who did most of the stopping there on Clint Gutherson. Parramatta 20 on their own side of halfway. Playing it through Simon. Took down this short side here. That's right. Tipping it on, Penasini going to get away from Tua Pilotu. Still 10 short of the halfway line. Second last play for the Eels, Makatoa. Coming into the game there, and a slow play the ball. Might be some pressure if they can push out from Marker on Dejan Arce. Tell you what, you've got to ask where that defence was earlier in the game, when the game was started. Parramatta just shot off to a great lead in that first half. That was their best set defensively that time. Where's that been? They've had some issues at this end of the field, though. Their metres were poor in the first half. Right the back of just 40% possession. They ran for a total of 412 metres, while the Eels had 712. Here's two Pilotto in field, linking up to Tolu Kola. They've gone sideways. Much of a game once again. Woods met there. Maybe picks up five or six only. Now Schuster from inside the 40, trying to hook it away from Gutherson. Had the angle on the kick, but Gutherson realised the chance was there. Cuts it off at the pass, and he'll play it here 15 short of the halfway line. Still no change to our half-time score on a combank. Remembering, second of three games on Super Saturday beyond this one. It's the Tigers and the Storm down the road in the southwest of Sydney at Campbelltown. Change for both teams, of course. This period of the year. Carthai playing it there at the 30. Now Madison bringing it back midfield. One more play here. Oh, no, trying to slow down the play of the ball without giving away a set restart. Arcee chipping it, coming forward. Kohler was there. The ball knocked backwards by Cartwright. It ends up in the hands of Sean Russell. And if the referee says this went backwards, it'll Adam, be a Parramatta try. Coming up to tackle six, mate. I believe we've got a knock on from Bryce. Chris yeah. Butler's advice is the touch by Cartwright was forward, not backwards to that man, Sean Russell. Well, he must have knocked it on into a manly player if that's the case, because the ball it's comes clear to spewing kick chase back. From the Eels. Has it in both hands there? And then it looked like he, the ball was going backwards so off his chest. Here if the ball hits Manly Winger's arm. That's right. Let's play on. Two Pilotu definitely makes contact with it as he wraps up Cartwright, but where's the ball going here? That's backwards. Yep. I think it's play on. The ball is uh, loose from Bryce Cartwright and hits the Manly defender's arm. We have a decision. We're going to say no try. The ball was loose, but the ball was going backwards off Bryce Cartwright's forearm before it was contacted by Tua Pilotu. So, after being unlucky to give away a penalty not that long ago, well, look at Tua, Tua Pilotu's play at the, at the ball there. Look. And 
looked as though it was backwards. Yeah, as Gutherson is saying, backwards off Cartwright. Before contacted by this man, Tua Pilotu. So the Eels, who, as we said, perhaps fortunate to get a penalty back in the middle of the field when there was a forward pass. And a little square up from the footballing gods right there. I think Parramatta's lost their way a little bit since Ogden and, and Campbell Gillard's been off the field. They were so dominant in that first half. The both front rowers, they really controlled that middle of the ruck. And I think Parramatta are trying to go round Manly at the moment rather than through them. I don't think it'll be long before you see those both players back on the field. Here's Woods playing it for the moment for the Sea Eagles. Aloye goes across to Arthur, who turns it underneath for Olokuwatu. But again, the edge defence. The Paramount of forwards through Makatoa there along with Dejan Arsky. And it's pretty handy. Arthur. And kick again down to Gutherson, who looks up, sees a long straight chase line from the Seagulls and they'll drive him back to almost the Parramatta 10. I reckon he might have looked up and see if Ola Kawatu was there. Remember just a little bit earlier, he smashed him in the tackle. He hasn't had to move that much here this evening. The kicking game hasn't really put Gutherson under any sort of pressure. Campbell Gillard back out there now. Let's see him go forward now. Watch this. Here we go. Tackle around the hips there by Josh Alloyer. Got some help from Lachlan Croker. Campbell Gillard slowly back to his feet. Now Hopkins wants to run it. Alloyer. Six again is the call from Chris Butler, the referee. And Parramatta begin here. The first tackle there from Hands. Off for Hengawi. Goes inside the 30. They're sent for a shift here on the right hand side. Hopgood. Finds Madison, good ball to Cartwright, he had a poise for an offload. Gutherson just missed the kick, jumps out of dummy half, takes it towards Aloye, who makes the tackle. And they're five out from the Manly line. Four plays gone, flat pass there. Came back, and off of him, Gowie is wrapped up. Here's the last, hands feeds it to RC, played at... Six again, no, it comes back to Manly, Saab has it. Good work by the Seagulls to trap and scrap, although... Knock on Manly. The call is knock on by Manly, and they will challenge. You just see Sivo go after Saab then no, when he got the ball, really come off his wing, try and put a shot on. It looked as though it was trapped by a Manly leg. The ball came... Up into the air here of Jake Arthur. That's like kick chase from Parramatta onside. The ball is played at by Jacob Arthur. And then Dejan Arce is there in a contest with Lachlan Croker to come up with the ball. And you could say that Arce made contact with the ball first. Just and need to see if Dejan Arce has possession. So one of these last night where the player doesn't ever really have securely possession Dejan there. Arce has possession. Then Lachlan Croker knocks the ball out. Just need perspective. Mm. It looks like he's got possession in slow motion. But does he ever have a full grip on the ball here? If he had it tucked under his arm against his shoulder I'd say fair enough yeah but in a contest like that he doesn't secure the, the ball the ball on one-on-one -on -one into Dejan Arce if he the had the is ball securely he wouldn't have lost it as Croker made contact with it I think it's again a tough call against the Seagulls and once more we saw a, a similar one last night so they're saying Croker knocked the ball forward into Arce no more challenges, Lachlan. I thought, thought Arcee had the first grab on the ball and then Trying it was taken off him by Croker. Right, let's go. The challenge, they Two lose the challenge. Here are the Eels who have it 10 metres out from the Manly line. Heading, Comes on, ball in. with the scrum feed, wasn't it? A clean one. Got to wait till the ball's in. He gets the shot. One more, that's it. Heads in. Sean Kepi, the lock forward, packing down against... Jermaine Hopgood, the lock forward in the hooking rolls. Madison comes out to Penicene. 
Connell was up there, makes the stop, back to Madison. He gets a head of steam up, look out from close range. But they do well there through Fayenu making the tackle. Brendan Hands, it comes back to Campbell Giller. Takes it towards the uprights. Only two plays gone there, deep on the left hand side. Here is Madison. Goes to us. Short ball this time. Gutherson was out the back. They went to the first man option, which was Andrew Davy. Hands comes back to Hopgood. He's got this in again. Madison stopped by Kohler. He's chosen his uh, moments well to jam in tonight. Makes a good tackle there on Madison. Short time Ray Cartwright. Going to bounce his way off the tackle there of Kyo Weeks. Set restart is the call. Six again. Now it will be the full penalty as the ball comes free. The markers are not square and there's no advantage from it. Well, I hope they play on here, Paramount. Josh, 24 to 4. Josh. He's got a problem here, Josh Schuster. He could go to the bin. I'll give you one warning. You're not going to talk to me like that. Happens again, you're going to go. Mark he remonstrated with the referee and had a bit to say as well. And I thought for a moment Chris Button on might say, I'm having Good none of that, you can go and take a seat. Well, I think I'd be co concentrated when I get the opportunity to run the ball. If I was Josh Schuster, we know what ability he's got. Only the one run. Here is Hans. Has been quiet. Haven't had too many chances though inside the 20 to this point of the game. The Sea Eagles is comes back to offer him Gow. He just sidles his way into the defensive line. Woods trying to slow things down. Joe looking for a, a restart. Doesn't get one. There's Hopgood wrapped up there in a solid contact. Daniela Paseca got to him first. From us, here's Madison. The big boys just keep trying out these edge defenders of the Manly line. They've been good to this point in the second half. Two plays remaining. Hands. Here's Gutherson. Comes to the short side this time. Has to get away from Fayou. Stays alive a long time there. That's the Parramatta fullback. He'll play it on the last. From Hands to Awasi. He'll kick. They were very flat. Looking for a kick. Flying high. The ball hits the deck. There was a chance for everybody, it seemed, to come up with that. And the referee will say no Adam, try. It looked like a Parramatta knockoff. Back to tackle one. Having no try. Just want to confirm there's no ground from Parra. Jiju is charging onto the ball there. Crossfield kick, Sevo. Joe on off a Gowie is the only player offside playing through out wide. He's outside 10 metres. It's clear run to the ball. It's knocked backwards from Ruben Garrick. Sivo knocks on. Touches the right hand of Mike Acevo and he knocks the ball on in the end goal. We have a decision. So it will be for the knock on end goal. A 20 minute restart here for the Sea Eagles. No, no, the quick restart. Had to wait for the official decision to come. Clint Gutherson tying his shoelaces and had to, was offside and the referee gave them time to just get their line set instead of having a quick restart there for Manly. So still no chance to our half-time score on Parramatta 24, Manly 4. And we've had just gone 17 minutes of this second half. Schuster turning it back on the inside here. Andrew bringing it back to almost the halfway line. It's Croker on Aaron Woods. Picks up his 10 metres, ends up on his elbows and knees and will play it here quickly enough as Schuster has helped out the back. Hands there from Weeks and now Tua Pilotu cuts away from the sideline, staying alive, still going, gets an arm free, pops it back to Schuster. Here's Jake Arthur. Wouldn't he love to score here tonight? It's his old club, in front of his father as well. Schuster at the line. Under this left edge, simply taken down. 
Plays it quickly. And comes to Schuster who rubbers. Cartwright going back. He played at it. And it will be a goal line dropout. Yeah, that was good play there. Little grubber kick in behind. Good chase from the Manly side. They look a lot better when they keep the ball alive, don't they? They haven't been down this end at all here in the second half. They force the line dropout. They're good enough to score. With the repeat set now, they give themselves some hope. I would imagine Clint Gutherson is going short. Yes, he is. He does them well. Tap backwards there. Jason Sabley tapped that backwards and clutched his shoulder immediately. He's got an issue out there. Saab, Paseca bringing it back, loses the ball on play number one. And it goes straight to Clint Gutherson. Well, just nothing going the way there of Manly. The second it was that time, loses the football, was over the line in the first half. Gee, just attention to detail really costing the Manly side. Zero tackle, they lose the ball back to Para. Second thought it was helped out. Tough night for him and his Manly forwards. Not to mention the coach, Anthony Seabold. Nearing their seventh defeat for the season down the barrel now in the mid part of this second half. Came into the game in eighth position on the ladder. The work to do in the second period of the season. They better be in the finals in September. Simons just outside the 20 here. Comes from Gutherson back to Arce. He puts the cross kick in. A chance for Russell to go up against Tua Pilotu. Boy, the manly outside backs had a tough night under the high ball, haven't they? Six more plays here as Madison. The sword is back towards the middle, beats Kepi point blank, and he's taken down there by Aaron Woods. That's the zero tackle. Off of him, Gowie. Trying to straighten things up. Still searching for their first try of the second half. Seemed unlikely given the way the first 40 went. Arcee stopping and starting. Gutherson into a hole over the top for the leading try scorer in the NRL. Mike Acevo gets another simple one here tonight. He's a Combank try scoring specialist and he makes it 28 to 4. I reckon he couldn't nearly score himself there, Gutherson. What about the pass over the top? I mentioned it earlier in the game. Here's the loose ball again for Manly. They're back three. They've been pretty poor here this evening, it's got to be said. Watch the money ball here from Clint Gutherson. Coming in to make the extra man. Explodes onto the ball. I reckon he could have scored himself here. Pass over the top. Sivo won't get an easier one than that. Doesn't he love scoring tries here? It's his 17th for the season. That's the money ball. Nicely done. He's gotten better and better as a ball player as he's come in to make the extra man, hasn't he? Gets better and better every season, Gutherson. Knows exactly what to do. That was the right pass. Sivo in. Hang on, what are we looking at? So we have... Adam, on tackle two. Review a possible instruction, please. Let's go back and see what happened on the inside to open up that space on the outside for Mike Acevo. Looking at the lead runner of Bailey Simonson. He goes into the line. Jake, Jacob Arthur. Arthur is looking to slide out to his right. Bailey Simonson makes contact on the outside shoulder, affecting his ability to continue to affect defend. Affecting his ability, he would never have we got have a decision. I know, it's, I know they'll pull it back, but... And after all of that, try number 17 for the season for Mike Acevo. He gets called back. It's no try and a penalty. And Simonson asking the question, saying, what did I do wrong? And we run into one of the manly defenders. Brad Arthur doesn't seem too perturbed by the decision. A little perturbed. They haven't added to the scoreline here in this second half, given they've still had... To this point of the game, 63% of the ball. It's almost two-thirds of possession. And we've had just over an hour of play. Don't see that too many times. Missing, of course, Mitch Moses, who was 
in sensational form in the win five days ago against the Bulldogs. And off the back of that, selected for New South Wales. The reason he is missing, along with Junior Barlow, see what they can do for New South Wales in the Origin Game 2 up at Suncorp Stadium on Wednesday night. Paseca works it forward here for the Seagulls. Carl Lawton is out there now for Manly. He's up. Goes to Schuster. No look pass there, put down. It's great when it comes off. But at the defensive line like that, just can't afford to throw it over your shoulder and hope it's going to hit the man you're intending it to hit. That's a poor pass. Yeah, it's not a great pass there. I suppose they're looking up at the clock and trying to play catch-up football, trying to throw the miracle ball, but that was a shocker. That it was. You can see the best of the best come together and battle for origin glory next week. As we said, limited tickets available still for the women's second game between Queensland and New South Wales on Thursday night up there in Townsville. And, of course, back here in Sydney, game three. And grab your tickets early because it might be a decider should the Blues go to Suncorp and do what they've rarely done in recent times. You can get your tickets nrl.com slash tickets right now manly trying to defend their line here is gutherson simonson side through a gap what a run by bailey simonson there'll be no denying this one yeah you won't stop this one they should have scored a little bit earlier there simonson he goes in for number two he's good in full motion isn't he once he strides out simonson gets himself in the clear backs himself Parramatta, that's their first try of the second half. All sorts of pressure put on Manly. They're stripped for numbers here. At the line, flat-footed, straight through Simonson. Too much pace, which can't make the tackle. Try confirmed, they don't need to look at this one again. No decoys there interfering, and it was Ruben Garrick. Who just had the eyes there. Andrew Davey, who went back on the inside. Garrick followed him in. And on the outside, it opened up a huge hole for this man, Bailey Simonson. We have a try here in this second half for his second of the night. Well, it was a long time coming, given all the possession they've had and all the chances inside the 20. 45 tackles now Parramatta have had inside the red zone this evening, and plenty of them in this second half. And they finally cracked the Seagulls. Yeah, really could open up now for this Manly side defensively. Gee, they've missed a lot of tackles, haven't they? 19 missed tackles for Manly in this game. They've contributed to it a lot of their own misfortune at the back end of the, of the ground with their back three, making three or four errors. Just invited Parramatta into field position. You keep doing that enough. They'll make your pay. Gutherson again, an arrow straight kick. That's difficult to do from wide out. No bend there. He makes 30 points to four. And Simonson, given a chance, really can move, Jake. Yeah, he was in and out to start the season with suspension and head knocks. Bailey Simonson played the majority of his career on the right wing. But since he's been back, they've moved him to left centre and he's absolutely dominated in that position. And the Eels, they score the majority of their tries down that left edge. And he has been a big part of that. And this will be a big statement win for Parramatta if they are able to go on and do it because they have never won in the past four seasons when missing both Brown and Moses in the half. So this will be a big one if they can finish it off. <laughs> Off they will try and do with speed here with Luca Moretti on the field now for the Eels. We saw in the corner of the screen there, well, the storm getting loose, not too far away from a kickoff at Campbelltown between the Tigers and the Melbourne Storm. That's the third game tonight here on Super Saturday on Fox Lee. Off for Hickey Ogden. The first try of the game while Kyle Weeks was missing. For the Seagulls, a professional foul in the ninth minute. Farmer scored 60 seconds later. They've gone with the job pretty comprehensively from there. Four against will be important in some of the positions. At the end of the season, the kick here will be too big. Weeks takes it on the full inside the in goal, so he'll bring it back. Couldn't tap it. The weights. A couple of teammates still in front of the 20, so he was forced 
to cool his jets. And so they'd like to see a few more tries than Parramatta fans if they could. Certainly Brad Arthur would like that, given four and against would be pivotal, as we said, if they finish inside the, the bottom four in the top eight. And he just might squeak a spot in fifth or sixth and have a home final in week one, potentially. To keep rolling on and keep winning more games, and the top four is still very much within reach for Parramatta. Yeah, poor old man, has been really inconsistent. You, you, you can't believe they put on 58 points last week against the Dolphins. Their attack has been jolted. They've never got going in this game. Far too many errors at the back end of the ground, but they haven't dominated. They haven't won any tackles. Only a couple, really, in this game. And Parramatta really haven't play, had to play that much football, but they're ahead 30 to 4. Another big win in prospect for them. And you saw there on the live ladder, they're now four and against plus 100. Exactly. And it's a healthy tally. Ball put in the air by Arthur. Tumbling kick over, end over Wren. Goes down to Sean Russell, who will bring it back here and play it just inside the 20. Looking ahead, the Eels next week will take on the Dolphins. That one on the road on the Sunshine Coast. And back in round 18, they will have the bye. Ball came free there. Gutherson cleans up and brings it back to the 40-metre line. They've had no trouble working it away from their own end tonight. There's the next five for the Eels, the Warriors, the Titans, and the Cowboys beyond the next couple of weeks. And they do have the Dolphins and their second bye of the season. Gee, that's not a bad run, is it, if you have a look at it? I suppose players can't be all that confident if they do look ahead, far, too far ahead. But they are all winnable games. And they are looking for more points right now down the short side. Davey standing with it, gets it back to Dejan Arce. He comes to the middle for Hopgood. Keeps it free as well. Back to Brendan Hands. He sets sail for the line. Taken down there just. There's Okawada who cut him down. Now Arce kicking. Simonson was knocked down here in a chase for the ball. Garrick was involved with him. Adam. And there might be a that's case that's here for a penalty no try. try. I want to see if there's any interference on the chase here, Bailey. Well, if there's interference, he'll go to the bin. Ruben Garrick. Jeez, they've done it for numbers again. Have a look at their left hand, That's right like hand defence. Sorry, side. the manly side. There's the grubber kick. Might have been better going through the hands there. He went out of Josh. I don't think he changed direction that much, did he? If Ruben Garrick. The contact is shoulder to shoulder oh. prior to Ruben Garrick hitting the ball there. They're both going for the ball here. Certainly had the jump as far as speed was concerned, Simonson. But as you said, you can go shoulder to shoulder, and maybe it's just Simonson who loses his footing in that shoulder both to shoulder are contact. Going at opposite angles for the ball. Bailey Simonson ball. loses his feet. Good playing ball. on at this point. I don't think I don't I don't think he changed direction to run into him. Ruben, Ruben Garrick. Garrick. We have a decision. No, I'm with you there. Well the bunker is as well. Yeah. Oh, flash up the red lights. It'll be no try yeah. for Bailey Wait, Simon. Team, the ball was yeah. taken dead no, no, by no, no, Ruben no, Garrick. So Parramatta will get it back here from the goal line dropout. Time's on. <laughs> Jake Arthur goes short. Gutherson flying high forward, pushing through there. Fainu had a contest of it, but the ball came backwards off the hands of Gutherson. They play it there inside the 20. Here's Moretti. Italian Stallion takes them deep onto the attack. Hands to Madison. Short ball here for Ogden. A long time between scoring tries and his last one. Before the one he scored tonight, he's getting a double there. Arce goes to Madison. Here's Benassini. Stopped there by Tolu Kola. And it's just come through him tonight. Madison shows it to himself. Takes them on. Nobody falling. The trick play there. Paseca and Lorden stop him inside the 10. Four plays gone. Set restart. Make that six tackles remaining now. Moretti! He backs his way into the end goal. 
but they'll wrap him up there. One. And just his third game Ready in the go. NRL goes as close as that, scoring his first try in the big league. Big shift to the left here by the look of it. That's exactly what they do. They plug into you, Blocky, as Arcee turns it back on the inside here. Dancing, nothing doing there for Gutherson. Our uh, fans thought there was some untoward contact there on their fullback, Ogden. He spins in front of the uprights. They've still got three tackles remaining in this six again set. Charging once more. They're ready off the short ball there from Hands. Fresh leaks. Determined to give him a chance to get across the line for his first full pointer. Madison fends away from Kepi. Runs towards the tackle there of Paseca, who takes him to ground. Hands waiting at dummy half on the last. Arcee chipping it towards Sivo. That battle continues between Sivo and Saab. And if he didn't knock it on with the first touch, Sivo looks as though he scored for the Eels. Yeah, looks like they knocked the ball back there. Sivo there on the spot. That's their favourite side, the left-hand side. They went for the big shift a little bit earlier. Went back to the middle. And then back there again. Here's the cross-field kick, perfectly weighted. As you mentioned, it's been a great battle. That ball's gone back and Ooh. bounced forward. I think, he, I think he might have knocked it forward there, Blocky. He's back towards the Manly goal line, but he touches there and drags it towards the goal line. That's why the ball is bouncing into the end goal. And I think for the second time in this second half, we're going to see no try for Mike Acevo. That's a knock on. Watch this angle here. Touches the ball there, and it goes towards the, the try line and dead ball. Line. Yeah, come off just under his elbow there. I think I'm with you. And then bounce forward again. Yeah. He's confident. And he won't be in a moment. Because the punk is about to tell Chris Butler, hey Chris, for the kick at goal, we're going to take a look at this once again. One more replay. We'll probably do it. Just under the elbow there. Ball goes forward. He's denied a try from an obstruction earlier on. This time will be a knock on off his own hands. The ball initially hit on the Michael beak Sebo's initially. Head. Yeah, after the ball hits Micah's head, it hits his left arm. That's right. The ball then rotates forward towards the opponent's dead ball line, constituting a knock on. We have a decision. The blue and gold army yeah. don't like it. No, and no. it's a good call again by the bunker yeah. here. He's, he's gone close. And he's still smiling. He's always smiling like a sea, though, but he's stranded still on 16 tries for the season. You have a look at the running meters here. They've almost doubled what Manly have dished up here this evening. 1,439 to the Parramatta side, 792 to Manly. They have been flogged. You, you don't see those sort of numbers all that often. And the forward pack has just been simply outplayed by the Eels forward pack tonight. Of course, they're missing Daly, Cherry Evans and Tom Travojevic, the Seagulls. But the forward pack, nobody missing there as far as rep duty is concerned. There's Josh Schuster again, a very casual pass. Out here to Kohler, who's got so much speed. Look at him go. The former sprint champion puts in a kick. Garrick is there. He was on side, and Manly quickly have it just outside the Parramatta 20. Speed of Kohler was graphic. Wicks to Schuster. He puts in a kick. Saab out wide, trying to track it down. Beaten to the punch, though, by Mike Asivo. They haven't done for numbers there. They, ch they chose to do the crossfield kick through Schuster. Sivo got on his bike to get back there. They were done for numbers. Clint Gutherson turns around and gives him a little clap. Well done. Look at the speed of this kid. Kohler. Love to see him in the clear. Gutherson can't make the tackle. Kicks in field, full pelt. That's really the only thing we've seen from Manly here in the second half. 
hasn't bothered the scoreboard attendant yet. And he can really skirt the former Newington College Spring Champion. Talu Cole. Kick here from Arcee. He was taken to ground there by Sipley. The referee didn't like the contact. And it will be a penalty to Parramatta at the Manly 20. They've been clamping down on this facet of the game. The contact is half an hour after the kick. That's the problem with it. Yeah, it was late, even late in slow motion. It's a clearing kick. Just wraps him up on the way down. He's taken a couple of steps there beyond the kick. Just contact that didn't need to be made. That's the reason for the penalty. Rather glum. Two for four, Sipley. Look to the big screen, watches the replay. On the 20. Hopefully he agrees with the decision because he needs to understand why it was a penalty. <laughs> sure, Anthony Seabold, if not Shane Flanagan. The Dragons coach in waiting to point that out, training during the week. And Parramatta inside the 10 here, hands from Dummy Hart to Madison. A quiet second half of point scoring, just the one try. Play it eventually. Comes back to Ogden. Boy, he rattled the uprights. Chris Butler thinks he might have got this down. That's his second if he has. For the moment, he'll refer it as no try. It'll be up to the bunker to find a bit of video here that has the ball on the ground. And they're saying that was an arm under the football as he tried to put it down here. Simply it was. The hold of his arm. I think he's held up there. Just looking to determine if Offer Hickey Ogden gets a ball one to the ground and two to the goal line. And there's no try. It's almost impossible to see there. This might give us a better angle. Oh. I can't see any of the ball down. Oh. If it wasn't down, Based it was on certainly the close. Two best but available camera angles. They're not going to give this. It looks as if there is a arm under the ball, mm. and then we lose sight of the bottom of the ball. We'll be supporting the on-field decision of held up. And that's the problem, that you just can't oh, see the ball actually make contact with the turf, despite there being a suggestion there for a couple of seconds that there might oh. have been some contact with it, but without being able to prove it, and with the referee oh. saying no try initially. Oh. And that was always going to come back. There's no try. Oh. For the big boy, off of Hickey Ogden. Arcee at the line here, Gutherson goes over the top, Micah, third time might be a charm, holds it out in one arm and then loses it forward. He's gone close but just can't find a way across the line in that far corner tonight. He did well against Saab, he'll be having nightmares. Having big, like a receiver running like that. Oh boy, Manley put it down here. Parramatta will get possession from inside the 10. It'll give us a chance to go down to Jake Duke. We mentioned Shane Flanagan a moment ago, Jake, and big news coming out of the Dragons camp this afternoon. Yeah, a developing story in the NRL, guys, that Ben Hunt will seek a release from the Dragons. He is apparently not happy with the direction of the club. Apparently, his manager has contacted Shane Flanagan and told him that. Now, obviously, Flanagan is here coaching Manly, which is not having a good night either, but uh, that is one to follow over the next couple of hours and days, and if you want to follow that, go to foxsports.com.au, and of course, we'll have more details on Super Saturday as they come to hand, but that could be a potential massive loss for the Dragons if Ben Hunt does get out of that contract. Boy, what a story that is. As you said, Jake Moore to come beyond full-time here. And Super Saturday with Ronnie and the boys in the studio. Ogden again. Parramatta just dominating the ball. 65% possession now. It's rarefied air. Marcy back on the inside. Has actually scored at least a couple more tries than they have to this point of the game, given all this ball they've had. Davey playing it, goes back to Makatoa. You've got to credit the Manly defence in this second half. They've been camped inside their own 20. Arcee, rubbering here, coming across, sliding weeks. Had it in the field of play for a moment before Dejan Arcee stayed alive and drove him back to force a goal line dropout. Yeah, that's a good tackle there from Arcee. Could have given up on the play. It was cleaned up at the back by Weeks. And Marcy drives him back in the in-gold area. Gee, just wishing that 
The Parramatta side will score another try. They've only scored one in the second half. Jay Carter with the short restart. Gutherson again. He comes down with it every time, just about. The positional sense is to realise where the ball is going to come down. And he's always had that X factor, hasn't he? Just puts himself where the ball is going to be. And already playing it there. Hands jumping out from dummy half. And spin his way in. And force his way across the line. Marcy again. Madison. Good tackle there on Andrew Davey. Made by Jake Arthur. Simonson spinning as he offloads there to Dejan Arcee. Comes back to Hoffa Icky Ogden. And he runs towards Paseca and they take him to ground. Last play here for the Eels. Arcee goes to Gutherson. Garrick jammed in. They got the ball away. Play on is the call. Here's Sivo. Chips over the top for <laughs> himself. And Makatoa follows up. He dives in to score off a Mike Acevo chip and chase. Oh, well done there by Makatoa. And also Mike Acevo, I was going to say, it didn't look like he put enough on the kick. Kicking for himself with a little chip over the top. Look at the coach's box. They're going, please, NKA, never kick again, but it comes off. Makatoa follows through. I hope he's onside here. But anyway, they've awarded it by the look of it. Parramatta side with the ability to keep the ball alive. Yeah, he's on side, all right. And you saw him point in behind the manly defence saying, kick it there, Micah, kick it there, because if you do, I'm a big chance to score my very first try in the NRL. And what a story it will be in years to come when he says Mike Acevo, instead of scoring his own try, put in a delicate little chip. It barely went a couple of metres. And... Makahesi Makatoa is now a try scorer in the NRL. Well, looked like he didn't put enough on it there. Mike Asivi knew exactly what he was doing. It was a good call. Makatoa. Look at him. They'll celebrate that for a long, long time. You owe me one. And he's a late bloomer, 42 games in the NRL. And here he is at 30 years of age. And he signed through until the end of next season. For Parramatta, he's been very good off the bench tonight. And Parramatta now with 66% of the ball, officially two thirds of possession they've had for almost 80 minutes of rugby league. Can't remember the last time that happened. Here's Gutherson, who will spray one to the right hand side. Trying to hook one back when the fade's been working nicely for him. So far tonight, but another big win. Third game in a row, Parramatta scored 30 points against the Manly Seagulls. The game coming up. Jerome Hughes and the Melbourne Storm going through their paces at Campbelltown ahead of their clash with the West Tigers. The Tigers have had a lean trot out there at Campbelltown in recent seasons, looking for a, a rare win in the southwest of Sydney. Jeremy the Peasant in the halves, of course, with Cameron Munster on duty for... The Maroons in Origin 2 on Wednesday night at Suncorp Stadium. Tough old night for Reuben Garrick and his manly teammates. Trailing here by 30, their record will fall to six wins, one draw. Of course, that draw, 32 all up at Mudgee against the Newcastle Knights earlier in the season. And now seven losses as well. Yeah, I reckon Ryan Madison's played a real good hand here for Parramatta here this evening think run he's had 13 runs or 15 runs for 126 meters so hasn't tried to finesse his way around this loss will slide the seagulls out of the top eight Parramatta here still time for at least one more to maybe bring up 40 points this very healthy four and against they have and good just slightly before the siren goes Gutherson puts it in the air Nice depth on that kick. Nice catch by Russell, though. Puts in a second kick. Drives it straight. Kyo Wicks is wrapped up at the Manly 20. Here are the stats to this point of the game. Two-thirds of the ball. It's remarkable Parramatta haven't scored 50 or, or more points here this evening, given how much possession they've had inside the opposition 20. 
they've had, would you believe, 68 tackles. That's 11 full sets of six inside Manly's 20. Yeah, imagine if Mitch Moses was, was playing the amount of tries he's had this season. He would have capitalised on that. They've done well by Parramatta. They've had much opposition here this evening. Here's just a Arthur comes out to Tua Pilotu. The combination that set up the try for Tua Pilotu. Manly's only points of the game in the first half. He's just outside the 20 here. Last play. Arthur will kick towards the wing. It's Saab versus Sivo again. Garrick was there. Sivo makes the catch. He puts the ball down, though, from behind. Saab came and swallowed him up and forces the mistake. And Manly might be able to take it all the way to the full-time siren with the ball in their hands. Olakuwatu. Manly fans rose to their feet when Sivo made the catch and there was not too many around him. They had visions of him going the best part of 90 metres. And the Seagulls got a little something here at the back end of the game. They'll get a penalty if nothing else. Ball ripped out there from Josh Schuster. Carl Lawton takes the quick tap and now there'll be a player in the sin bin. Is it Makatoa? Might have been the try scorer. He's been sent to the sin bin. Off the hickey Ogden, in fact. Time's off, mate. I'll tell you when. He made contact there with Lawton, who took the quick tap. And so they'll finish the final 43 seconds of the game with Ogden in the sin bin. <laughs> play it here just a couple of metres out. And they lost it there in the play of the ball. Well, that's the story of their evening, isn't it? The in second, every sense. The Secker and company in the forward Ready back was completely outplayed by Clint. the Eels forwards here tonight. It just came free ever so slightly. He realised that there were no complaints. The Seagulls, next week they take on the Melbourne Storm on the road as well down there at Amy Park and beyond that in round 18 they have the Roosters that one back Four Pines Park on the northern beaches here in Sydney but neither team in a hurry to pack the scrum looks like the end of an NFL game they just let the clock run out and at full time here at Combank Stadium another big win for Parramatta the momentum builds in 2023 they've taken down the Seagulls 34 points to 4